So this session we're going to be making the knickers. So this is the pair of knicker, the set of knickers, made with bobbin net. And you can see it's French themed down the center front. You've attached your bias binding on the leg edge. And when you were cutting out your net, we told you to quarter it or put it into eight. So if you look at the knickers, they're divided and each side is divided into quarters. So the lines are stitched down. And it's idea if you stitch that down first and then do your lines across. Um, so when you've divided your net, you can either go with the full quarter like that, going straight across, or divide it into eight. So you've got eight of these sections because each side is quartered, which is whatever your preference is. Um, to begin with, I think probably the eighths is easier because we've got smaller sections to play with. Yeah, and then you would stitch these lines down first, and then you would stitch all your lines for where your frills would be attached. These have been done in a slightly different color, so you can see, but just do it in white, in your own white and make sure you use a cotton thread in case things get dyed after the fact because polyester thread won't take the dye. Yeah. So, you pattern So I've give you all a pattern this is this pattern is to fit the shop mannequin is what we're working with so it's bigger than what a normal tutu would be not not a lot but just in case you use this pattern again make sure it is a bigger size so um, this is your basque pattern and this is your knicker pattern so I couldn't fit it on 1A3 so you'll have to it's in two pieces so if you join it line up your arrows and tape it make sure these are all lined up and you might have to when we did this last year because it was for the shop mannequin and it's not like a human body it's just solid so there wasn't much give so I've added about an eighth of an inch on either side of here. You need to add that. I haven't added it on this one, so that's a little, um, you can do that yourself. So you can cut it up the side and add a little bit on either side and maybe a tiny touch at the front as well if you want. There's not much in it. It's only a small amount. It did last year when they had to let their basques out a little bit. We just stretched it to fit and it was fine. So it's not a disaster if you don't do it. So this is your knicker net. Mine's not washed, so it's still quite big, but it shrinks quite a lot. So when you lay it out, you've ironed it, pressed it really well, and you're going to lay your pattern on it. You need to make sure that the stretch of your fabric, the the greater stretch across it's got more give that goes across the body and the up and down it doesn't give that much compared to the other way yeah so make sure you position your pattern that way make sure your side seam is on the straighter grain pin it in place So your pattern is pinned out 
if you carbon paper all the lines around the outside, all of these lines, quarter it. So put all your information on it. Um, you don't need to mark this knicker line because you're sewing your bias binding on the edge here and then turning it up and stitching it to that line. So that one, that dotted line doesn't need to be there. So once you've done all that, cut it out, give yourself a, an inch seam allowance around the outside. And it helps if you, I hadn't marked this on the pattern, but it helps if you mark out this is, this line is for layer 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I'd write that on there. And you can see this little notch. This is where you clip for your buckle pocket. Yeah. And then also, your, it's a double layer that you're cutting out. Make sure it's a double layer. So you need that for the strength. This is a black one, I don't know if you can see it, but this one has got a, a side seam in it, so just ignore that. Ours is all in one piece. So if you look at it, you can see the stitch line. So you can see here where that's quartered. So that's your side seam is the middle, and then you're going to quarter these two. Um, so if you look at this one, you can probably see it better on this you can see these lines. So you need to sew them lines down first. And you sew with a little small zigzag. So just slightly zigzag so it gives it a little bit of give. Because if you sewed it with a straight stitch and you pulled Forgot to stretch it with snaps, so doing a little bit of a um, zigzag gives you a little bit of give in the stitch. And then if you stitch with a zigzag down this line, the center back, before these are both have been cut out, unfortunately. Um, before it's cut out, it's laid out straight to here. You can see, just do a line all the way up, so you can see it there. And then at the notch on your pattern, you're going to clip. And then this edge, you will turn to the front. You'll just turn it back and turn it under. So say this was it. You turn it, press it like that, and just turn it under and do another stitch with a slight zigzag yeah and then it will look like this so you're turning it back to the front of your garment and that's your center back that will be your placket so that'll be the opening where they climb in and this that's left out will get seamed up later on So if you stitch these lines down, do them first, and then stitch all your lines across. And it helps if you go one way, go back the other way, that way, back, until you've got all your lines on there. So do both sides like that. So you buy a spining on your knicker legs. If you lay it along the edge, open it up and do again a slight zigzag to stitch it down. Near the crotch area, slightly go about an eighth of an inch away from the edge and fold back about half an inch so that you've got a finished edge when it, when you turn it around. So do that on both sides, so it should look like this then. So you can see the little channel there, you can pop your elastic through there, and same on this side. 
So you've ironed it up, folded it up, just turn it in slightly, give yourself a bit of a lip, and then again with the small zigzag, stitch it down. So that is for your leg channel. So once you've cut it out, sewn all your information onto your knickers, put your bias binding for your leg channel on, you need to join the two pieces together with a French seam. So you did a French seam on your basic sewing skills when you did it on organza. So it's the same method that we're going to use today. So firstly, you've got your two, two edges. Sew them together with a small seam allowance. So, and a zigzag. So you got a little bit of give. So if you look at the beginning of this, that's a uh, two width zigzag and a two length stitch. So it's a little bit big, so I've bumped it to one and a half zigzag and two inch stitch. So it's just a slight zigzag, just gives you a little bit of pull. So you need to do that. And then what you would do is trim down. You don't want a big thick seam. Open it up, press it really well. So set your seam, press it. <coughs> Open it up. Make sure it's completely open so you haven't got that happening where it's slightly over. Make sure it's opened up really well. And then sew it um, Iron it. So now you like this and you can just see the shadow of the seam allowance through it we're going to stitch along there so we're encasing that on the other side and you don't want any peeping out on the other side yeah so you, you can see the raw edge you're stitching so it's closed in yeah so stitch down i've opened it up and I've ironed it to one side. So that should be on the inside. And if you look on the other side, you can't see any of the raw edges peeping out. So this is your center front line. So when you do your French seam, make sure your lines are meeting up. Yeah? Yeah, they should meet up in the center. And make sure the... Um, That edge there is inside the knicker, so your leg channel is on the inside, and that's on the inside. And your placket is sewn to the outside. Yeah? So sewing on your frills to your knickers. So you've pleated them all up, you cut them neatly down. Um, and if you look at your recipe, it tells you where they go. So if you look at the bottom of each of your list, it tells you what, what rows to sew on first. So layer six, you sew on first, then five, four, three, two, one and then your leg ruffle. 
make sure you've put your one inch channel on layer seven and then that would be eight, nine, 10 and 11. So that's the order you start. So you're starting on row six. So if you figure out where row six is, which is, it's the second one up from here. And I put a pin so I don't lose where it is. And what you do is you get your frills. It also says on your recipe what direction they go in. So if you look at this, it says up. So these are all up, the first ones. And then when you swap around and go to seven, it says down. So you change the direction you sew them in. So up, is this direction so up to the top and where you quartered it you want to line them up so we're on six so this is where I will pin my first one attaching the frill so you're on the correct line you want to lay it down on the line so the stitch line of your frill to the stitch line of the knicker and just put it flush with the center back where the placket is it's flush once you get down to where the seam allowance is you will leave an inch extra over so so at the eights my thread tacks on my fabric my uh frills i put them on the quarter lines or the eighth lines so pin them in place and then you can see how much you've got to distribute there. So this is a little bit big. So on one, I'll just turn it over and give myself a little bit more of a frill to make it fit. Same with this one, this one's slightly more. So I do it in two. Instead of one big one, I just distribute it more evenly. Done one. And this one's more, this one fits, so. And just do that all the way along. And then machine with uh, your slight zigzag all the way along and go to the next one. These aren't the correct lengths, but you get the gist of it. And again, because I'm on the, the placket still, I just want it flush with that edge it in place. I'll just pin this. I'm happy with it all. I can come along and then stitch it again. And then just carry on all the way down. This one, don't forget when you come to where your seam is your center back seam to leave about an inch over. So I would pin it there. Yeah, and just carry on. Um, and it's an idea, don't stitch right to the point. Just go back about half an inch because you need this to come out of the way for when you join up when you join up your center back seam and then after it's joined up you can lay them down so an inch past and stitch about half an inch away from your thread mark seam line allowance line yeah so it can be folded back out of the way and then once you've done all these what you do is You change direction so all of these it's a bit hard because they're pinned let me let's push these pins out the way once you've got all of these laid down so you push these all out of the way 
and then you start putting the upper ones on facing down towards the crotch and again flush with that edge and in place And again, pin all your quarters in place and stitch with your zigzag again. So carry that on until you filled it up. Then after you've done all that, your next job is at the bottom of your placket. Take the seam allowance and French seam that as well. So sew it to the front first, like you did the center front. So outwards first. Machine with a small zigzag, trim it off and bring it inside. And do a French seam exactly like you've done on the center front. Yeah. And then you can French seam the crotch as well together. So when you do the them together, the leg, you can see your stitch crotch stitch line. They will come together. You'll have a gap between where your um, bias binding. So that's giving you access to it so you can feed in elastic into the leg channel. Yeah, so it's not closed off. So French seam the crotches together. And then that's, you're done for that part. So this is what your tutu plate should look like when you're finished. The underneath and the top. There's the top edge of your knickers. There's your French seam on your crotch, and you can see the space of the leg channels. And the French seam down the center back. And that's the front there. Yeah. So that's what you should have at the end of this session.